The health care stalemate, slipping approval ratings, and the erosion of the Democrats' power in the Senate. President Obama hopes to move past those issues in his first State of the Union address tonight. So how will he put the bad news of his first year in office behind him, and what will he turn to to focus on next? For more now, we're joined by Lisa Lehrer, congressional reporter for Politico. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Um, great to have you here. The uh, American people have spoken in their polls. The important issue for them is jobs and the economy. Um, how is the president going to address those issues in the uh, State of the Union address so that the American people feel confidence in his mission moving forward? That's exactly right. The focus of the address tonight is going to be jobs, 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 and more jobs. And uh, one of the main ways he's going to address it that, that at least we, you know, we've gotten some word of in advance is he's going to unveil a package of uh, proposals aimed at helping middle class uh, people cope with the difficult economic conditions. Things like tuition grants for school, you know, expanded child care tax credits, help for people who are caring for elderly parents, uh, help with 401k contributions. So things like that are really aimed at helping, um, you know, people who are struggling. Um, what other issues is President Obama going to address in, in his speech um, and how is he going to work towards um, fixing the economy? Well, another big issue he's going to be talking about is spending and deficit reduction. Uh, there's been a lot of pushback at the White House, you know, did a bunch of big, very expensive programs during their first year. They had the stimulus plan, which the stimulus bill, which clocked in at $487 billion. They bailed out the banks. They bailed out the auto companies. And those things all cost money. And there's been a growing feeling, at least in polling, that people are concerned about this level of government spending and what it's doing for the deficit. So one thing the president's going to do is announce a freeze on all um, discretionary spending, basically all non-military related expenses with the exception of a few big you know entitlement programs like Social Security and Medicaid um, so that's that's meant to counter those claims that the administration has been spending far too much and it's driving the country into debt there are estimates that it could total 1.35 uh, billion dollars or trillion dollars rather um, how effective would a spending freeze be and what about congressional support well, congressional support is going to be tricky. Um, Republicans came out right away and said they were they supported it. They thought it was a good idea, but it was too little, too late. They sort of li they likened it. One popular line on Capitol Hill yesterday was likening it to someone who just won a pie eating contest going on a diet. Uh, liberal Democrats also don't like it because they're they think that given the economic conditions, now is not the time to be cutting spending. That in fact, government needs to be spending more to help you know jumpstart the economy and create jobs and things like that. So it's going to be a hard hard sell on Congress. It's also a pretty small percentage overall of the federal budget, so um, the impact could also be, you know, it's a start, but it could also be a pretty muted impact. In general, how effective is a State of the Union address in changing the mood of the American people and helping past presidents bring their poll numbers up? Well, it's definitely a good a good point for President Obama, certainly, to hit the reset button. Um, and this is sort of the, a venue in which he, sh he really excels. Uh, President Obama is quite good at giving large addresses. Um, you know, he's obviously a, a brilliant orator, and he's really good at sort of restarting things in those types of venues. So people have high expectations for the State of the Union, but I think tensions are higher than um, they've ever been in his presidency before. Certainly with the Democrats losing Massachusetts last week, that's raised a lot of concerns within the party, um, you know, between and sort of laid bare this divide between moderate Democrats who say the, you know, who interpret the results of Massachusetts as saying we need to change our approach in Washington and liberals who say we need to make good on the things we promised. And the problem, we lost Massachusetts because people were uh, disenchanted with the fact that Democrats haven't achieved everything they came into Washington to do. All right. Lisa Lair from Politico. Lisa, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me.